physical science, and today we are going to be talking about physical and chemical properties and changes. Mrs. Bazicki here. Um, I am going to do these next few sets of notes for you, uh, especially because I teach chemistry, and you guys are going to be doing this with me in chemistry in a couple years from now, so it should be lots of fun. So physical and chemical properties and changes. <clears throat> okay. So a physical change is a change that occurs without changing the identity of the substance. Uh, what that means is no new substances are formed. So if you see my friend um, Olaf on the side here, uh, you can see that he is melting. Melting is an example of a physical change because when you take solid water like ice and melt it um, into liquid water, it's still water. It hasn't changed what it is just changes what it looks like. So, some examples. Um, a change in size, shape, color. So for example, if you add food coloring to um, some cake batter to make rainbow cakes, um, that would be an example of a physical change because it's still cake batter. If you tear paper, um, it's still paper. <clears throat> we talked about ice melting already. Um, if you dissolve sugar in water, um, this is one that even a lot of my 11th graders struggle to remember. If you dissolve something in water, it's actually a physical change because you're not getting a new substance. Um, you're just getting sugar water. Um, and if you actually evaporate the water by either boiling it or leaving it out to evaporate into the atmosphere, um, the sugar actually and water separate and you can see the sugar again. So kind of cool. If you want to try that, go for it. It's actually really fun. Um, and something like painting a wall. Um, so anytime you're adding color to something or like not changing what it is, but changing maybe what it looks like by its color or, you know, its shape or its state of matter, that's all considered a physical change. On the other hand, uh, chemical changes. So a chemical change, the change that occurs um, that causes the identity of a substance to change. New substances with new properties are formed. And what that means is you get something brand new. This is where we talk about chemical reactions. Um, anytime you do a chemical reaction, it's a chemical change. So you're making a new substance, um, something completely different than the original. All right. Some evidence that this happens. So if you're not, not sure if you've seen a chemical or physical change, here are some ways that you can tell. So if you get a new color, so if you mix like two clear liquids like here and then all of a sudden you get a pink or a purple or a white, you're like, whoa, where'd that come from? That's the evidence a chemical change has happened. Heat, light, or sound uh, is given off or absorbed. So if something is hot or cold when you mix things together, if you think of like hot hands, those things that you buy like the holiday when your hands are freezing, there's actually two chemicals in there and when you pop them, uh, the chemicals create a reaction that produces the heat. So that's a chemical change. Bubbles uh, or gas that is formed. So if you mix things together, like baking soda and vinegar is a great example of this, um, and you get fizzing or bubbling, that is a really good example of a chemical change. Uh, a solid material forms called like something like a precipitate, um, which is when you mix two liquids and you get a solid. This is really cool. We're actually, um, you're going to see an example of this in the videos, but it happens a lot more than you think it would. And then um, the other thing to remember is if the change is difficult or impossible to reverse. So things like burning. If you burn something, you can't go backwards um, and fix it. Same thing for a lot of these chemical changes. You can't just turn them back into the original substance. They're changed forever. Okay. Another example is something like wood burning. Right. If you burn a piece of wood, you can't change it back. Um, it's burned. It's ash. Um, you can't like put it back together and make it wood again. Metal rusting, right? So if you leave your bicycle outside and it rusts, right, turns that brown color and like flakes off, that is something that you cannot change back. Um, it's an example of a chemical change. Food digesting, one of my faves, right? You guys know I love food. Food is life. So if you eat food, you digest it, right? You break it apart. Um, your body uses all the individual parts of that. And then whatever you don't use gets released as, you guessed it, poop, right? Poop does not look like the original food that you ate. It's not the same texture or color, at least I hope not. Um, and it's 
very, very different. There's no new, not very many nutrients in there, things like that. So when you're changing something chemically, you're getting a completely new outcome or new substance. Baking a cake, right? Think about it. You take cake, you mix eggs and milk and flour, and you max it all to mash it all together, and it becomes this like liquidy mush. And you put it in the oven, and it's this fluffy, flaky, magical cake that's delicious, right? And then gasoline burning and reacting with acid. And we'll kind of get more into those later, okay? But these are just some examples of chemical change. So just a quick review, all right? A physical change is when you are changing a substance but not making something new. And a chemical change occurs when you get a completely new substance at the end. Awesome, you guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed me reading these notes to you. And have a wonderful rest of the day.